Definitely bringing the pain there. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today I'm joined by Tom Colicchio. He's a James Beard award-winning chef. He's got some Emmys in the trophy case, and you can catch him on season 14 of Top Chef, which returns to Bravo on Thursdays. Tom, welcome to the show. Thank you. This is pretty awesome. I feel comforted because I know that you once saved a party guest's life who was choking on chicken, right? I read a New York Times article one this, time. This is true. I was standing in the hallway and noticed I turned, turned to my right and I saw that these two guys patting her on the back and I kind of walked up behind her and said, can you breathe? And she went like this and oh, I hit her once. I said, now and now. Again, and chicken flew out. And as it turned out, there was about 50 journalists at the party. And within minutes, I got a call from my, my, my wife saying, what are you doing? <laughs> Getting quotes and stuff, I don't right? know. Yeah, but it was pretty crazy, but uh, yeah. Well, it gives me a sense of comfort. Are you ready to start? It gives you a sense of comfort, but I'm going to eat the chicken. <laughs> I, hope, I hope you can do it. I think it's all heat. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of flavor. You know, the fermentation's fine, but not... Not, not a huge fan. I want to start by talking about your near miss with Sex in the City, because from what I understand, you almost had a scene in the pilot, but it had to get scratched due to some unfortunate circumstances. Yeah, they, they shot the pilot at, at Gramercy Tavern. And the day before, a combination of a couple things happened. I was playing basketball and sprained my ankle so bad I, I couldn't stand. I, had, I was actually bleeding through my skin, it was that bad, and I had to the hospital, I had a walking cast put on. We also had a fire that day. And so the area where they were gonna shoot was in our um, sort of wood burning grill that we had, but we, we had to scrap the entire scene because we couldn't light the grill and I couldn't stand up, so yeah. Did you feel at all like you missed an opportunity? Like now it's probably easy to look back and laugh at it, but at the time you're kinda like, oh, that would've been awesome. At, at the time, who knew it was gonna be a hit? It was, it was a pilot. It Maybe it's more up, painful yeah. now. Well, probably more painful now, <laughs> yeah. But uh, it was, it's, you know, it's a great show and we were happy that we could actually help them launch it. I can tell that Schoenberger producer, creator of Hot Ones, he really tried with the sauces. I think he was like trying to impress you. Like this seems more deliberate and like the wings are a little warmer. You tell me you usually get cold wings with hot sauce. Mm -hmm. Now we get, we're getting actually hot wings and hot sauce. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Just for you, Good. Tom. These days, it seems like the ways in which a restaurant or a chef can win, it's very varied these days. Lots of paths to success. Yeah. And what I want to do is bounce some scenarios off you. It's just a game of would you rather. And you can tell me, would you rather have this or would you rather have that? And then if you can kind of explain the logic behind it, I'd appreciate it. Does that sound good? Sure. Would you rather get an extra star from the New York Times or an extra star from the Michelin Guide? When the Michelin Guide first came to New York, Kraft got one star. And I was interviewed. And someone asked, you know, what I thought of the Michelin in New York. And I said, I think it's really great. This is the first year. If, if they're here for, you know, 10 years, 20 years, I think that'll, that'll be great. But growing up, I didn't dream of Michelin stars. I'm an American chef. I dreamed of New York Times stars. And I'll stick to that. I still would rather one New York Times star. How about 100 five-star Yelp reviews or one tweet from Kanye West saying Kraft's the greatest restaurant in the world? I'm not a fan of Yelp, but I'll take the Yelp fans You'll right now. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, Kanye, I think he's in the hospital recovering from, you know, uh, some brain de de you know, defect that he has at this point. But, right. Uh, yeah, we'll take the Yelp. So would That's you rather win choice. another James Beard Award or win another Emmy? Considering that um, I still consider myself in the restaurant business and not in the entertainment business, I'll take... I'll take uh, another beer award, especially since we're opening a new restaurant. And so we probably get nominated for best new restaurant and I would take that. Would you rather the Obamas come to one of your restaurants for date night or Rihanna post an Instagram with your signature dish and like a giggling emoji? Uh, Obamas in the restaurant, no, no competition. All right, so this one is a Yucateco chili habanero. Mm -hmm. Is it chili habanero? It says habanero. Yeah, that's good. Host of the show kind of knows the sauces, kind of doesn't. Mm -hmm. You had the distinction of being roasted at a food policy fundraiser. Mm -hmm. What do you think was the funniest joke someone got off on you? It was a lot of lighthearted stuff. I think, you know, Padma got a good good couple licks in. Um, I actually roasted her at the Friars, uh, Friars Club roast. So you did. She got me back. I had a rebuttal to every single one of them, <laughs> and I got them all back, but it was, you know, it's all good fun. Besides the heat, someone's actually doing a pretty good job of seasoning these, which is with salt. So it's pretty good. Somebody over there. I couldn't tell if that was a child or Eddie Wong. 
Um, <laughs> but I guess it's a child. <laughs> I know you bristle at the thought of chefs being the new rock stars, and in part because you idolize rock stars. You're oh. very much a guitar guy. I, I, I play a little guitar. I don't say I idolize them, but I, you know, I, I have respect for their craft. Can I ask you what would happen if, let's say, the hostess at Kraft went running to the back of the kitchen and said, Eric Clapton has just taken a seat. Can you take me step by step what happens from there? Do you greet him at the table? Are there dishes that you send out? No, I don't, I, you know, I don't think I, I send out, you know, I've had over the years plenty of rock stars come in the restaurant. I usually leave them alone. I try to position myself at the door at the end of the night just to say goodbye. I, I think that people, who, if they come into the restaurant, should give them the space, let them eat, let them enjoy themselves. And again, I'll, I, I try to just catch them on the way out. This is like the parting gift. And a t-shirt. <laughs> and a t-shirt. <laughs> <And a> t- <laughs> <laughs> so we undercut it with like a citrus blend. No, I like the citrus, I like the acid. You do? So I think it's balanced, yeah. This is why I don't like sriracha, it's just hot. There's no sort of background. This has some background flavor, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, I like it. We have a recurring segment on our show called Explain That Graham, but you're way too much of an adult for this segment on our show, but Damn. you do have great pictures online. We've pulled a couple of them, and we just want the bigger picture, okay? You tell me what's going on in Got this it. picture beyond what just mm-hmm. you see, okay? You and Eddie and Pat and Oswald. Oh yeah, the Gugamuga, uh, the great Gugamuga uh, in Brooklyn, the food festival, music festival. And that was the first time I met Eddie. I like him a lot. You know, when I first met him, I, 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 you know, I didn't, obviously I didn't know him, and I didn't know much about his background. He told me that day, he said, I'm writing a book, it's gonna come out, I'm gonna have a TV show, and I'm gonna blow up. And I was like, yeah, sure, okay. Book, TV show, blew, blew up. up. Yeah. Tom and Jay-Z, this is iconic. If this isn't framed in your house, then it's, I don't it's know. Not actually. <laughs> that was at the um, uh, uh, NBA All-Star Game. He does an event, a fundraiser uh, for his foundation. As famous and as, as wealthy and successful as he is, um, he, he still hasn't gotten too far away from Queens, so. Brooklyn, I should say. This Probably. is interesting. Oh yeah, I was Simpsonized. If I remember correctly, um, I was in Marge's dream. She was on Top Chef and she was competing. And I said something and then the stove turned into a car or something. And I turned that actually into my, my, uh, my, my Twitter um, avatar. Because you have to. If you're Simpsonized, you have to. Yeah, at first it wasn't. It was, it was a picture of me and a fish or something. And I was like, nah, <laughs> nah, I'm Simpsonized. Nah. The game really does. Does it, it's does sort it of ramp an up from here? Does it? Ramp up okay. situation. There's a huge debate right now in the restaurant industry about whether or not tipping should be abolished. And I know that you've mm-hmm. tried it out in at least one of your restaurants. Mm-hmm. Can you give me an idiot's guide to why tipping doesn't make any sense anymore? Because I think it is hard for people to wrap their heads around. Why should we leave it up to 100 to 200 people a night who come into the restaurant to decide who's, how my employees are going to get paid and how much they're going to get paid? We want to professionalize the industry. We have professionalized the industry. And I think they should get paid like professionals and they should get paid a wage. The argument is, well, we're not going to have good service. Actually, I think the service will get better. Why? Because now, if you're going to complain, you're going to complain directly to me. You know, if you complain to a waiter, I'm not going to find out. If you give a waiter a bad tip, I'm not going to find out. If you tell me that someone gave you bad service, uh, number one, I'll know. And number two, I'll do something about it. The food's late. That's one of the biggest complaints. Food's late coming in the kitchen. That's not the waiter's fault. That's the kitchen's fault. Right. You're not punishing the kitchen. Right. And so there's a lot of reasons why I, I, I think it's an outdated model. But if we lost it, one thing that I would miss out on are those great stories about outrageous tips. You know what I mean? Yeah, I love yeah, yeah, when those yeah, sure, stories sure. hit the news. You know, mm-hmm. about Shaq leaving $20,000 behind. I love those stories. Right. And your restaurant experience, <laughs> are there any of those that stand out? Uh, I don't, again, I don't know. I don't get involved in the tips. If someone got a great tip, it's, you know, they usually keep the If tips Shaq tips. left 20 Shaq, stacks behind, know. you'd we, know. We know, we know, yeah, we know. You'd know, you're doing your top, you're doing. You do that little shake thing, it'd be really great. Smoke a lot of salt. Your restaurants, Kraft and Gramercy Tavern, they've birthed some of the most celebrated chefs in the city. For out-of-towners, can you give me some iconic New York dishes that people would really understand and learn about New York having tried them? Definitely bringing the pain there. Mm-hmm. That's a good question. I can think of Gotham uh, in their seafood salad is a real icon- iconic dish. It, you know, Alfred was the first chef to start using height on plates. And that seafood tower is just a, it's a classic. I would say any um, 
raw fish preparation from uh, Eric Repair at Le Bernardin. Uh, Le Bernardin was one of the first restaurants to actually bring, outside of Japanese restaurants, to bring uh, raw fish preparations um, and also undercooked, you know, lightly cooked fish preparation. So I would say that's a classic. Um, uh, God, let me think. You know, Coney Island hot dog, maybe. Huh? That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. You know, I had a, a little bit of a sinus uh, issue, and it's starting. And we're cleaning it up. It's clearing it up. Yeah. So well, you're it's, welcome, it's, Tom. Yeah, yeah, it's good. What's next? <sighs> so this one is the bomb beyond insanity. Glasses are on. <clears throat> what makes this beyond insanity? You're about to find out. Mm -hmm. I know that you're very involved in food policy, and you really put your money where your mouth is. Mm -hmm. You go to Capitol Hill. You confront Congress face to face. But it does open yourself up to a certain type of internet troll, a certain type of criticism that even when you're championing something that's very common sense, like child hunger, mm -hmm. people will still go after you. Mm -hmm. When people say, Tom, go back to the kitchen, <clears throat> make food, stop thinking about hunger, mm -hmm. do you get kind of a kick out of that or does it bother you? No, it, it, it neither, because I think that it's, uh, it should be right in this country to, feed, to, to, to have food, also to have nutritious food, not, not just garbage. If someone has a problem with my, my politics and think I should stay in the kitchen, let's look at food through a different lens. Because I think if you look at some of the topics of the day that people really care about, whether it's the economy, whether it's healthcare, whether it's, um, um, whew, that was hot. Um, uh, healthcare, uh, national security, and the environment, food actually could fix all of it. My guess is there are certain things that you think, you know what? When it starts to burn your ears, is that a problem? No, that means that means that means the show's going just according Ooh. to plan. There's probably some issues where you're like, well, that's a pretty complicated solve. And then maybe there are other issues where you're just like, this seems so easy to me. Why can't we do it? Is there one issue that stands out to you as being like the most frustrating thing? Uh, hunger's easy. Hunger's now, easy. Po poverty's harder. Um, well, sometimes, you know, because the two well, they issues... They go hand in hand. They actually yeah. go absolutely, absolutely go hand in hand. When I say hunger is easier, because we produce enough food in this country to feed everyone. So if you look at countries where people are literally starving, it's usually because of famine, because of war, because of drought, because they're act actually producing enough calories um, for, um, for their citizens. We do here. We produce more than enough food. So really, people are hungry not because we don't have enough food. They're, they're hungry because we don't have the political will to make sure everyone's fed. And that's what's frustrating. Are you ready to move on? <sighs> it's, it's, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> you know, I, the, 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 my mouth is fine. Mm -hmm. Lips are on fire. Mm -hmm. My stomach's gonna hurt tomorrow. <laughs> yep. We don't make you do any of this, Tom. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, at this point, I can't stop. <laughs> hey. I'm the last two wings away. I mean, I mean, do you really pussy out with one more wing left? Mm -mm, no way. You can't. No fucking way. You can't have that on the internet no, forever. No. What I want to do is a little Top Chef rapid fire to you, drawing on all those seasons that you have. It's not going to be easy to think this through the Mad Dog 357, mm -hmm. but we're going to do it, Tom. Mad Dog 57, not so bad. Tom is a G. Look at Tom. Favorite guest judge? Um, favorite guest judge, uh, God. I mean, the obvious ones, because everybody wants to hear me say Anthony Bourdain. Um, and he was always great to have around. Charlie Theron, because at one point she just turned around and said, does anybody in this room have an Oscar? <laughs> <laughs> no? <laughs> then shut up. <laughs> Past winner that you've been most proud of? Um, you know, proud of them all. I think, think going back to, to number one, I think Harold, um, because I think he represented the brand so well and represented himself so well. And, you know, he didn't go out there and go on the, on the chef's tour and the whole bit. He actually opened up a few restaurants and did really well for a while. And I think, you know, he was the first one and I think he really set the standard for, for everything that came after that. Do you ever get into it with producers? I always wonder this behind the yeah. scenes because there are probably people that like, you know, they're a fan favorite, they're an instigator, whatever. Maybe you get a couple weeks past your expiration date. <laughs> so from day one, which I think been great about the show is that the producers, and I, I say this with, with um, I'm a producer, so I, I do have a say in it, but the producers don't have, get involved at all in who stays and who goes. We really don't get it. Occasionally, if we're trying to make a tough decision, you know, we may hear one from the background say, well, you know, this one's a better character, and we're like, it doesn't matter. Right. Just, they don't taste the food. They have absolutely no, no say at all in who stays and who goes. Um, <clears throat> So this last one is Blair's Mega Death Sauce with Liquid Rage. It's tradition around here to put a little dab on the last wing. Ah, okay. 
Tom, you don't Hold have that. to if you don't want no, to, but my no. guess You're is... Do it. That's where I I'm thought this going was going, like Tom. That's where, no I guess, way. that's where I thought this was this going, all, Tom. This is all fine. <laughs> a little dad will do you. Yeah, there we go. I like I like because it has technique. I like when we have chefs. Well, you know, you want to, you know, it's got a nice... Oh, there you go. <laughs> you might pay for that yeah, probably next will. couple days. Yeah, I'm going to. Let me preface this question before yeah. we take a bite, okay? Uh, okay. I'm always curious about your thought process when you're judging a dish. So I'd like to sort of present this last wing to you as if it were a dish on Top Chef. And if you can just speak your thought process out in as much detail as possible, if you were to judge this dish. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to present it to you sort of like um, Top Chef style, just cause like this is what I would say. Um, I present a carry out wing from B-dubs. It's been tossed in Blair's Mega Death Sauce uh -huh. with Liquid Rage to get full coverage. Uh -huh. We serve it room temperature on wood with a milk chaser. Enjoy. Cheers. Um, oh, first, is it cooked properly? Is it overcooked? Is it undercooked? Is it seared properly? If it's a wing, it should be a little crunchy, right? Mm -hmm. So is it crunchy? Then is it seasoned properly, which is really salt. Is, is it just seasoned right? now? You tell me it has mega death sauce on it, so I expect it to be hot. So the question is, is it hot? Fuck yeah, it's hot. Um, <laughs> I, sometimes I'll ask your chef if they overcook something. What's your intention? What is your intention? How, do you, how did you want to serve this? If they say medium rare, no, it's not medium rare. You screwed up. If they say medium, well, wh why would you serve it medium? Is that the best way to serve it? And let them hang themselves a little bit. Yeah, all right. And then you're looking at everything else around the dish. So in this case, it would be the wood board and the, you know. The hot sauce, but <laughs> does it all make sense? Is, you know, as you eat it, do all those bites make sense? Can you get a different bite, or do they all work together? Did that bite make sense? This bite makes sense. Yeah, um, we got. We have to finish this way now. Yeah, I got. We have to finish. Here. Does this make sense? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Absol absolutely not. But it was a lot of fun. The time <laughs> you made it through, you cleared the board. This camera, that camera. Let the people know what you have going on in your life. My wife and I. Uh, along with Food Policy Action and a Place at the Table campaign, we are actually launching an anti-hunger campaign. The First Lady will, will be in our first PSA, and uh, we're launching sometime in December. Who's hungry in this country, why they're hungry, what we can do about it, and the fact that we can actually take care of hunger in our lifetime in this country so that our, our children and our children's children don't have to, not only, not that they're hungry themselves, but don't have to witness people in this country um, without food. So that's, that's the next thing on our agenda.